This is the first of five videos covering the material in Chapter 3, Composition of Substances and Solutions. This slide just lists the outline for Chapter 3, and this video will cover the introduction. Let's start off with a question. How many molecules of water are in this beaker? Well, here are some things we know. First, we know that each water molecule is made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. That's sort of shown down here, if you remember from the last chapter. Hydrogen and oxygen are matter. Matter, we know, has mass and volume. That's the definition. This beaker has a volume to it, and we can read that off the beaker. So there's the volume of water in the beaker is 300 milliliters. There is a relationship between volume, mass, and it's called density. So I can use that relationship for water. The density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. Therefore, the mass of water in this beaker is 300 grams. So now we know how much matter is in this beaker. We have 300 grams of water. There must be some relationship between the amount of matter, the mass, and the number of molecules. One of the reasons we know that is because if water has mass, and we know that water, H2O, is made out of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and we know the mass of those, we should be able to, in theory, be able to calculate the mass of water in this beaker. Before we calculate the number of molecules in that beaker of water, let's try to form a relationship, and let's look at some different elements first. So first, let's start off by looking at carbon. Let's actually put some carbon in this little blue pan here, and then we'll weigh it. So I put it on a balance. It weighs 12.00 grams of carbon. Let's now, just for the sake of argument, say that I could actually look with a very powerful microscope, and I could count those atoms. So I do that. I look and I count the number of carbon atoms. It turns out it happens to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon in this little blue pan. From that information, I can build up a relationship. There are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon and 12 grams of carbon. And if I look at the periodic table, and I look specifically at the cell for carbon, I can see I have 12 as my atomic mass. That's the actually equal to the mass of all the neutrons and protons in a single carbon atom, 12. Let's do another example. How many atoms of helium gas are in the cube? This cube contains approximately 22.4 liters of volume. If I m measure the mass of it, subtracting off the mass of the container itself, I get 4 grams of helium. And let's again, for the sake of argument, say that I could actually count those atoms. So I go in there and I count them. And sure enough, I count those atoms and I get 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium in that cube on the balance. There's another relationship we can form then. I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in 4 grams of helium. If I look at the periodic chart and I look specifically at helium cell, I see that the mass of helium, the atomic mass, is 4. It's the same as the amount of grams of helium that we measured in this cube. Let's do it again. How many atoms are silver are in the ingot on the balance? 
So I put this cube of silver on the balance. I measure its mass of 108.0 grams of silver. I'm going to go in and I'm going to count those atoms. When I count those atoms, I get 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver. Again, a very similar relationship as to the other elements that we looked at. There are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver in every 108 grams of silver. I look at the periodic table, and here's that number again, 108 atomic mass units for silver. My hypothesis after doing these three measurements is that there is a special relationship between the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and the atomic masses because this number keeps on coming up all the time. In fact, if I look at all the elements on the periodic table, that number always comes up. If I look at calcium, it has an atomic mass of 40. And sure enough, if I take 40 grams of calcium, I find out that there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of calcium in that 40 grams. If I look at iridium, it has an atomic mass of 192. If I take 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iridium, that iridium weighs 192 grams. If I look at zinc further down in the periodic table, if I take 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of zinc, it weighs 65 grams of zinc, the same as the atomic mass. And finally, looking over here pretty far to the right on the periodic top table, if I look at fluorine and I take 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of fluorine and I weigh that, they weigh 19 point grams grams. So there's this relationship between the atomic mass number and 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That number is what we call Avogadro's number. One of the first people to actually hypothesize this number. What we're going to call this number from now on is one mole. So if I wanted to have one mole of fluorine, I'd need to weigh out 19 grams. If I wanted one mole of zinc, I'd need to weigh out 19 grams. If I wanted one mole of iridium, I'd weigh out 192 grams. If I wanted one mole of calcium, I'd weigh out 40 grams of calcium. And that's true for all the elements on this periodic table. Moles and molecular weight. Does this relationship carry over to molecules? Let's take hydrogen gas and put it in that same cube that we had helium in. So, and now let's, how many molecules of hydrogen gas are in there? So I weigh this cube, subtracting off the weight of the plastic cube itself. I get two grams of hydrogen. I count those molecules. Remembering that a molecule of hydrogen is diatomic. And sure enough, when I count those number of molecules, I get 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of hydrogen gas. So I have a relationship again. For every 2 grams of hydrogen gas, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of hydrogen. This time, because I have two atoms of hydrogen make up my molecule of hydrogen, I need to add those two atomic masses up. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. And that relationship holds then for molecules also. So, how many molecules of water are in this beaker? So I put this beaker of water. It's got about approximately 18 milliliters of water. I weigh it, subtracting off the mass of the glass beaker. I then count those molecules of water. Remembering water is a molecule now. It has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. I count those molecules. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 
the relationship I build up now is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water for every 18 grams of water. I look back at the periodic table now, and I have one atom of hydrogen, six, one atom of oxygen, and one atom of hydrogen making up water. Add up their atomic masses, I get 18. Sure enough, for every 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water, I'm going to actually have 18 grams of water. Or I could call that one mole of water, because I know that number here equals a mole of water. So the relationship we've come up with now for water is that one mole of water has a mass of 18 grams, or I could rate the relationship like this, 18 grams of water per mole of water. Finally, we can come back to our original question. How many molecules of water are in this beaker? We now know a few more things. We still know that the volume of water is 300 milliliters. The density of water is 1.8 grams per milliliter. I know, however, that I have 18 grams of water per every mole of water. That's just that relationship that we came up with on the last slide. And I know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole, per mole of anything. So let's put that down in an equation. I'm going to start off with my 300 milliliters of water. I'm going to convert that using the density relationship to grams. I'm going to convert that grams into moles by using my new relationship of one mole of water is equal to 18 grams of water. And then I'm going to convert that over to the number of molecules in my mole. So I use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water equals one mole of water. Therefore, I've calculated the number of molecules of water in this beaker. There are a lot. Let's now also see if we could calculate the num how many moles of water are in this beaker, because that's going to be a very useful quantity to know as we go through chemistry, the concept of moles. We don't often actually think about the number of molecules because it's such a large number. Therefore, we convert the units typically into moles. Let's look at what we can do now. I have 300 milliliters of water. I can convert it to grams of water using the density relationship. I can convert it to moles of water using the grams per mole relationship for water, and then just calculate the number of moles, 16.7 moles of water. This number tells us how many molecules are in that beaker, because I know the relationship here with molecules and water. But we're now going to think about it in moles from now on. In the next section, let's see how else we can use the concept of moles.